Welcome to another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric and Tour de Fleece 2023. I am once again set up to do some plying and today is going to be my challenge day plying. I had thought about, <laughs> I had thought about um, practicing a little before uh, coming into the, in front of the camera, but I wanted to show you <laughs> the bobbins that I will be plying. This is um, Coriadel and this is silk, 100% silk. <sighs> so I thought about that. And then I thought, well, maybe it would be a good thing to actually show you some of the, <laughs> some of the process of let's see what we're doing, see if it's going to work. And maybe that could be part of my um, challenge as well, is sharing with the audience, <laughs> sharing with the audience um, my, my whole challenge. So what I intend to do is to try to make polka dots. So right now I am coiling the thin silk, or I'm, I'm wrapping the thin silk on the thicker, um, on the thicker Coriadel. And I can already tell, I am getting, I am getting spots. I'll put it for, yeah, that camera's not going to show up, but I'll put it for this. I'll zoom in on that camera so you can see what I'm doing. But I can already tell that I'm getting way too much twist in this, um, for what I want to do especially as slow as I'm going to go. So I'm going to change, I'm going to change my um, location on the world. And I'm just going to go ahead and spin a little bit of fiber just to get it all started and start kind of fresh. All right. So I need to treadle slower. I have a larger world, so it, I'd have to treadle more treadles to get as many wraps. And I'm going to try it again. And I'm going to go ahead and coil on. So I'm going to wrap a bunch of wraps in one area and then I'm going to loosely spin for a few inches and then I'm going to wrap tightly in another area and then I'm going to loosely spin. That is what I figured might make polka dots. Um, my polka dots right now are coming out a little pink, not red, but we're just going to have to <laughs> accept what it is. Um, I will tell you, I've only done coils or this type of, or even anything kind of like this, um, like once before. So this is, this is a challenge. And I, I'm not sure, so when you look at coiled yarn, this is definitely not um, what you'd think of as coiled yarn because I'm not actually trying to make a coiled yarn, lots of coils. I'm just trying to have every so often a polka dot. And you know what? Since the Coriadel, oh, that one's gonna be a bigger one. Since the Coriadel is a fluffy yarn, I'm hoping that as soon as this hits, um, hits the water, it will start to uh, fluff up a little bit. I think though, here in the next little bit of spinning, I'm going to, yes, sorry. I am slowing down quite a bit so that I can spread out, spread out um, the red further along without as much twist in it, or not as much, um, yes, not as much overlap, so there's more gaps. It's not easy to do. It really does want to, to uh, it's, it's hard to um, keep the spacing of the, the plies. The, you know, <laughs> the habits of, um, <laughs> the habits uh, <laughs> of, Years of spinning kick in, and I want to try to spin a balanced, um, a balanced yarn. 
<sighs> but you know what? I think this is really working and I will certainly be zooming in on the other camera. I'll be very upset if it isn't working, but I will not be able to apply all of this on, um, on camera. I will run out of time. And so, um, if there's any technical difficulties, I'll get some secondary footage to put in. But so far, this wrapping it back and forth on itself to make a thick wrapped area is kind of giving me a polka dot on an otherwise little bit barber pole um, yarn. One of the other things I thought about doing, there is a technique that I, I, I've seen where I could have taken two strands of white, and I may still do it, I have a lot of this stuff, but if I took two strands of white and wrapped um, in catching in between the two strands as I'm plying it, I could take two strands of the white and as I'm plying it together, catch little tufts of red silk or red fiber in between the strands and that could have probably given me um, polka dot. What I kind of initially thought to do is um, make kind of an eyelash yarn where every so often I would let I would let the red coil back on itself and ha and stick out like a little pigtail. However, I've allowed the red to rest enough that the, the twist in it, um, there isn't enough twist to really want to coil right now uh, back on itself, as in pigtail back on itself. Oh, all of the different coiling that we're talking about. So I think this actually may work to give me my polka dots better. Let's see. Let me see what's going on over here. I think it's becoming, it, it really, it's, it's sadly reading a little pink. So, hmm. The, the red is definitely making the white fiber look a little um, pink. So I may not be getting my red and white polka dots. So with that being said, let's see. I am going to pause and be right back. <laughs> okay, I am back. So what I have brought to the forefront is some um, red silk noil. And what I'm going to try to do now for just a minute is what I was talking about. I don't have a second, the second white, but I'm going to try to catch as the two fibers are spinning. I'm going to try to catch some of the silk noil in between the two strands that I am <laughs> that I am plying together. All right, now that is definitely a polka dot. So my red and white polka dotted jersey <laughs> inspired yarn may read a little pink because let's just say somebody didn't wash it properly and it bled. That's it. The biking jersey that's red and white polka dots, it bled. So all I'm going to be doing here is in, in between the red silk and the white Coriadel, I'm going to fly in every so often. <laughs> now, this is definitely something that takes some coordination, but I'm going to go ahead and fly in some clumps of red silk noil into little coils. And now I'm getting a much more defined um, red and white polka dot. So if I, and I, and what I'll probably do is after the after <laughs> later today after recording this I will take the white Coriadel and I may go ahead and um, apply it on itself and try to just have the two white strands of the Coriadel 
wrap around some of the silken oil. But you know, the honest truth is when it comes to practicing and playing with the challenge arm, you're not really necessarily on your first you know go trying for massive yardage. You're trying for the experiment. And I would say I am now getting a funky, <laughs> I put it for that, a funky red and white uh, spot. So whoops, I'm now spinning it the wrong way. There we go. So at the end of this video, for those of you who stick around or want to fast forward to the end, I will share with you any finished skeins of yarn <laughs> that I get from this project. So today did not have a topic. It's a challenge day. And I knew that just spinning this would be enough of a topic. Um, I think sometimes, and, and I think, and I think what I, what I wanted to leaving the topic, just being the challenge and being the discussion of what I'm doing. And, you know, I think we do tend to treat our fibers as being very precious to us. They're not, it, even, even when you are um, sourcing it um, in, in the, you know, most economical way you can, the truth is, is it does, we do feel um, it is an expense and it's kind of, I think sometimes it's hard for us to, to dedicate some fiber to, um, to creating yarns that we may not know what to do with. We may <laughs> actually really dislike when we're done. Um, <laughs> but I think it's important to allow ourselves a budget of, um, a budget for the experimental, for trying things outside of our um, comfort zone. Ah, this is a good way to measure out the distance between each of my spots. I'll put a spot in and then I'll spin it until the spot hits the orifice. Then I'll bring my hands back to me and I'll put in another spot. Ah, I'm dropping the oils on the floor. So as I was saying, I think we do tend to avoid a lot of experimentation because we are ah, concerned about using the precious fibers um, that we've purchased. But I think if we budget in our, um, in our, if, if we think, okay, I'm going to get a fiber that, that is different. I want to try something different, or I'm going to get a fiber that I, that I will dedicate to just playing around with trying it. I think that helps. But I think the biggest thing that helps is to not dive into, um, trying to spin four ounces of experiment. There is nothing wrong with taking um, your purchased fiber and breaking it into smaller clumps, smaller, that one did not want to catch, smaller bundles and treating them as each individual spins. One four ounce or 100 gram, um, you know, um, bump of fiber can be broken down into smaller parts. And when it comes to doing something like this, um, and I'm looking at how full my bobbin is of Corydale, <laughs> trust me when I say, <sighs> for a first time trying something like this, I, I, I would be very, very exhausted if I tried on the first attempt of this technique, I'd be very exhausted if I tried to spin through everything I have on that bobbin. And so I know when I, I, I put the fibers together, it, was, it wasn't so much about well, how much weight, it was more of I was preparing fibers and that's just what I prepared up and didn't know exactly how I was gonna use it at the time. So don't hesitate to make small, test skeins. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's a great way, especially in something like um, Tour de Fleece, it's actually a really great way to switch up your spinning and keep things fresh. It is, 
it is a it's a long month of spinning and um and when you're trying to take photos and share with other people what you're doing it is kind of nice if you have something different to share every couple days so I know one of the big things as 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 knitters and crocheters is we want to we keep trying to make the biggest skeins of yarn because none of us like the whole concept of weaving in ends and so we think oh yeah we have to have the biggest skein plus we we tend to compare ourselves to the commercially purchased yarns um, that we're we're more accustomed to until we start spinning our own and they come in um, oftentimes much larger um, skeins of, of fiber. So we get it into our mind that if we have a four ounce, you know, um, braid of fiber that we need to, you know, spin it all at the same time, that we need to have it all fit onto one bobbin. We can't have any joins. We don't want to weave in any ends when we're done with our projects. And so we we aim for that but you must remember if, if you ever have a chance to see antique spinning wheels you're going to notice that many of them there now there are a couple exceptions um <laughs> that i've seen but many of them um have very tiny whorls not whorls bobbins many very, very tiny bobbins so they were clearly making small amounts. Additionally, if you're a spindle spinner, um, your spindle's going to get full. So sometimes we need to remember that this, this construct of giant skeins of yarn, this is modern and it's done by machinery not by hand and yeah i i enjoy as much as anyone else um trying to see how much i can fit onto you know they say oh this is a the, the bobbin this bobbin i have over here the, the regular size bobbin it's a four ounce you know it's a four ounce bobbin it holds four ounces of fiber well just because it can doesn't mean it has to <laughs> Um, and so <laughs> it's one of the great advantages to preparing your own fiber too. You can decide for yourself how big or small your prepared pile is. I personally, I have, what, are you, what are you doing back there? What are you doing back there? I personally prefer, um, if I'm going for a larger size, I personally prefer six uh, I, if I'm going to make socks, um, six ounces, um, because I like long socks, six ounces tend to um, work better for me. And I can split them into two, three ounce sections, get a two ply yarn quite easily, or I can set split it into um, three two ounce sections and can get a three ply really easily. But when I am plying them together, even on my jumbo bobbin, I do have usually end up with two um, skeins of, of fiber. Um, one that is large and one that's smaller. Somebody has a, you have, oh, you have a toy. My little ginger kitty is behind me at the moment and she has a toy. And so if, if you hear rattling, it's not the wheels, it's not me. And I think her brother is about to come in and pounce on her. So who knows what kind of chaos the microphone might pick up or the cameras might pick up here in just a moment. <sighs> so as I was saying, pick, you know, feel free to um, spin smaller quantities of fiber. Don't feel as if you are... Um, required to spin a huge amount. All right, so this, 
is actually forming <laughs> some 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 sort of red and white. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up at this point and switch to see what it would look like if I am spinning um, two strands of white. And that means that I am going to need to, again, step away from the camera, prepare a, a bit of, of, of this and see what happens if I um, am doing two strands of the Coriadel. And I'll just add it to this, um, <laughs> add it to this. And I will, as I said, at the end, I will share what I have. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have an idea. At the end, I'll share whatever whatever hanks of yarn I have. But I think what I'm going to do instead, let's see just how <laughs> crazy, um, let's see how just how crazy I can be. And I'm going to actually, let's try a three ply. Because then I don't have to take this fiber off the bobbin. I don't have to combine it um, in any other way. Um, I was thinking I would just ply some off on a, um, as a to do a two ply. But instead, I'm going to do a chain ply. So let's just get that pulled through. Now, here we go. Chain plying and attempting <laughs> to put a pinch of red in a section. So there's some red that's now gone into <laughs> the orifice and oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's really good to make sure that your wheel is going the right direction. It's, it plies much better if you do that. There we go. There's another chunk of red. And we will embed another chunk of red. So I'm just doing a I'm just doing a chain ply. And <laughs> okay, I'm just doing a chain ply and trying to keep my um, my loop open as I place <laughs> the silk in. Now, and that's a little bit different. So you're seeing it real time. Me trying to figure out if this will work. So pinch that. Trying to figure out how to keep that open. Okay, there we go. I think this might work a lot easier if I just, if I had taken the time to um, pinch apart all of my silk into little tiny dots ahead of time. But I wasn't sure I was gonna use this silk noil because I wanted to try, you know, with the other silk. But you know what? I am getting red background. I mean, r white background with red polka dots. I am definitely accomplishing the goal ah, of getting red polka dots on a white background. <laughs> I have no idea how um, structurally intact any of this might be, but it's getting it's getting wrapped in, so it should stay. Um, yeah. Well, I know that uh, I have spent a lot of time laughing in these videos. I hope that you, my dedicated followers and my new followers alike, um, appreciate my efforts. It is, it is different doing um, torta fleece than it is doing a regular, you know, um, vlog time. There is a lot 
of just day after day fatigue that builds up. And that goes for any of us that are spinning. There is a day after day fatigue. Rest breaks are essential, but I am having fun. And that is, I think, what is so important. And that is what is um, sustaining. I know many of you that have followed me for a while know that I have, I have, I have a number of health issues, as many of, of you have expressed to me that you do have, have as well. And the thing is, is I have found that I can't do a lot to, to change the situation about my health issues. Of course, there are medications that help in, in some cases. There is, you know, getting better, better rest, eating well, things like that all help. But for me, the thing that helps the most is taking time to laugh. Um, taking time to, to not, not positive toxicity that we can sometimes get into. Not telling myself that the world will be fine. Not, not ignoring the world. Not ignoring how rough it feels. I have one of the big things I've had to learn in life is not to not ignore the pain. I'm really good at blocking out um, the pain until something, uh, you know, until my body finally reaches a point where it can't take anything anymore, and it um, it throws up a protest. I think I need to. There we go. It throws up a protest at something as simple as a paper cut. Let's see. I'll put that back here a little. And so sometimes um, when I do ignore the pain too much, I ignore the stress, try to push through, then it becomes something simple and minor becomes all of a sudden um, just out of control. And these days, my body, one of the things that it likes to do is it likes to take, so this is not my best, by the way, this is not my best three ply. I do a three ply or a chain ply much better than this. Holding that opening and keeping it in place while I'm trying to put this other fiber in is, is, is quite the uh, challenge. Um, but as I was saying, so right now, these days, my, what my body's doing is it overreacts overreacts to everything and something that would otherwise be just a minor blemish um, can get infected and be a problem it's just it's because my body is saying oh my goodness that paper cut that you that you have it's 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 threatening your life now let's send every bit of you know defense at it and overreact beyond all proper measure and so it creates complications just because the body's trying to heal more than it needs to heal so i know that this is something many of you will recognize but here's the thing avoiding the stress avoiding the overdoing it can help mitigate that quite a bit but so i'm i'm as I age, I'm very um, aware of the importance of not, not overdoing it, but also not becoming, not taking on positive toxicity. When you see me laughing, when you see me enjoying it, it's because I truly am enjoying the journey. That doesn't mean I'm enjoying the journey 24 hours a day. It doesn't mean I don't see the bumps in the roads. It doesn't mean I'm not having bumps in the roads. It means that right now today, I'm doing something and I'm sharing something that I enjoy. That the enjoyment that I'm getting out of trying to put these silk noils into, um, into a chain ply on camera, I'm actually enjoying it. Yes, it is certainly a challenge. But at the, in this case, and this I think is really very important, this challenge 
This challenge is one of my making. This challenge is one I can control. I get to decide when I am done. I get to put this challenge aside when I'm tired. And there's a lot of challenge in my life, as I know many of you experience as well. <laughs> like right now, there's a lot of there's a lot of challenge in my life that I cannot control. Much like this um, chain ply has just become completely out of control here. I have a curly cue of some sort um, that has formed and <laughs> it's, it does not want to move. But that's the thing. I can control this. Well, I have some semblance of control. But also, you know what? And I guess this is a perfect example. In spinning, this is my fiber. And if I say, well, you know what? That knot's a pain. That doesn't look good. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to move on to the next section. I have control. I get to decide. I get to decide how much I spin how I spin. I'm the judge of my spinning. I have some control. And that is one of the reasons why. And actually, I'm going to put one more little piece in and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, that is why I think spinning works so well for me. That's why I think I do this and why I share it for a little tiny bit. I get to control. If there's frustration, I'm in control of it. And I think that's the thing that I've learned over the years. I can't control most things. And trying to control most things actually harms my health more than helps my health. So when I take on a task, whether it's vlogging or spinning something like polka dot yarn, when I take on a task like this, it's giving me a sense for a brief amount of time that I have control that I otherwise don't feel like I have. And that, that is something that it, it, it helps. It's therapeutic for me. I feel better about the day. I feel better about myself. I feel better about the world because here in just this little corner of my life, I get to decide how much fiber I'm spinning, how I'm spinning it. It's my decision. It's my choice. And I think that's why the main reason why I do this. And that is why you see me laugh so much while I'm doing it. Because here I get to laugh through the frustration. And when it becomes too frustrating, I shouldn't be doing it because clearly I'm not in a mindset or more importantly, if you are becoming frustrated, one of my videos that I did more recently, <laughs> if you go back, I asked the question, what do you seek? If you are becoming frustrated with your spinning, even on a challenge day, ask yourself what it is you're seeking from this journey. And I suspect you will find at least some sort of solace because you're probably seeking the wrong thing for the moment. So that is my message. I hope that it is because I had the breaks in it. I don't know exactly um, how long it's going to be, but if it is a little bit long, I hope that you have stayed to the end. I will share a picture of my, my um, little hank of yarn. <sighs> and until tomorrow, I wish you happy spinning. And I hope that you get to unwind with some fiber and fabric as well. So we'll see you tomorrow. 